Hi Anti Society, welcome back to the Anti Social Planet, and today we are watching episodes 349 and 350 of Bleach. So in the last episodes, I feel like we really started to get into what the heart of the show is going to be, at least in the last episode where we saw Ichigo deciding that he is going to discover what this new Fullbringer ability is and work with Ginjo and his group to see what exactly he can get out of that, where he's, you know, really feeling like he is helpless and wanting to find a way to break out of that. I think he's very much focusing on how can I protect my friends and I do think that Ichigo to a large extent if his friends weren't in danger in some way I feel like he would find a way to be content with the fact that he isn't a soul reaper anymore but I also think at the same time that let's not pretend that Ichigo doesn't enjoy fighting because he does and we've had conversations about that before he's had conversations where Kabachi's just been like no you like fighting the only difference here is that you have like other things besides just enjoying fighting and getting stronger that also motivate you I feel like that's also also part of it too like Ichigo one enjoys fighting enjoys that kind of a thing even before he was a soul reaper he got into fights all the time two he in likes to protect people feel like he can protect people it's just a fundamental part of who he is and I feel like he was rejecting that a lot when he didn't have his abilities anymore he was just sort of assuming he couldn't help and three I think it connects him with the people around him because they're all basically fighters to some extent I know Orihime is a bit of a gray zone in that like she's not really a fighter but like she's still connected to that world so I feel like even if Ichigo didn't necessarily like fighting for the sake of fighting, he has friends that just do that. They have some kind of spiritual ability that pulls them into conflict because hollows exist and somebody has to fight them and it can't be normal people because they can't see them. So it has to be people who can sense spiritual pressure and spirits and stuff like that to step in. I feel like there's a lot of factors of why Ichigo wants to get this Fullbringer ability, but also at the same time, like, I feel like he's like really focusing on the fact that it's not about him, and I feel like that should probably come up at some point, that like, it, to some extent it is about him, and he needs to just like be okay with that, which is fine. I feel like we all kind of get awkward and weird when we're talking about things that like just benefit ourselves, like when we have like little selfish moments, but like at the same time, you have to be sometimes, like you have to focus on on like things that help you and make you feel like fulfilled and stuff like that because otherwise it's just gonna turn into chaos. Anyway, I'm not here to lecture people on their morality or whatever, but we do have Ichigo deciding that he is going to get this full bringer ability and he was put into a dollhouse box thing by Riruka? Is that her name? Riruka? I think so. The girl with the ponytails and had to fight against this pig thing that was someone that they just like abducted and decided to bring into their weird training thing which has some ambiguity around whether or not there are good people with that decision being made but that's where we're at and Ichigo seems to have decided that he is going to channel the ability of his Fullbringer through the combat pass badge thing that he was given by Uketake because he has a lot of connection to that. It basically symbolizes all of his experience as a soul reaper. We got a little snip at the end of it kind of having some kind of effect on it, him figuring something out. We got the red and black that we usually see when Ichigo is able to use his abilities. So it looks like we are going to see him unlocking his full bringer or something adjacent to it. I don't really know exactly how the whole thing works. The rest of the group seems to just have been born with some kind of Fullbringer ability that they just inherently knew how to use, so I'm not really sure where Ichigo's ability is going to manifest itself, but let's just get into episode 349. In three, two, one, go. My sound is kind of high. I'm actually like really excited to figure out like I don't know, all of the abilities and kind of some of the stuff about how it's, like, how Ichigo's manifests itself and um, the mechanics of it. I'm a huge, like, world building and magic system junkie, though, so 
to me like learning a whole new magic system like not entirely new because it's obviously inspired by like stuff that came before this but getting to see that unfold this late in the series is actually kind of a cool concept to me because i like because because i already know the characters so like it's kind of a cool concept to introduce a new magic system this late and ha have like try to like ichigo and like the main cast kind of try to navigate it and obviously some of them already having connections to fullbringer i'm just really excited to see his ichigos <laughs> like that's what i'm looking forward to the most is what ichigo's skill set is gonna be especially to defeat this pig Yeah, we had crazy beast mode, which is doesn't sound like a, a fun time for anybody. I'm still very concerned about how we just like found a random person and have forced them into this. I mean, I know they like imply that like he wasn't a great person, but still. It seems a little bit mean to pull him into this training exercise. In my opinion. Oh, and like hurting him too. Like it's not his fault he's in crazy beast mode. The guy put the timer thing on him. You just sort of feel it, I guess. I mean, you're pride, specifically. But I do like that everyone else before this was just like, I don't know, we just kind of, it just kind of happened. <laughs> They're like, we've just always had it. I guess, like, said though, is like the only one who's had to, like, discover this ability, like, later in life. Whereas, like, the rest of the people with Fullbringer seem to have, like, been doing this for a while so he's probably like the best person to teach Ichigo like him and I still think Orihime has full rigor but like people who had to like figure it out in the recent past as opposed to like people who've been doing this since they were just kids and they just gotta have a feel for it Let's go. <laughs> it is. It do, it is the the guard. That's interesting. That there's a connection between how Zengetsu manifested. And like how his fullbringer is. Like I guess you have like some input of what like your um, zapakto is gonna look like, especially since he like had the comeback pass with him throughout all this, and he's like using those memories as a trigger for it. So it, it makes sense that Zengetsu would be included in part of that. And it's kind of nice to like give him a comfortable place you know like something that's familiar when he's kind of learning all of this from scratch i mean he's not really learning from scratch because he still knows how to fight which is something that we've established but he's learning full bringer from scratch so it's probably nice to have something that's reminiscent who are you i've seen you in the opener and i think you're with a book guy which makes me nervous
Ooh. Does it not work if he's not in contact with it? Is that what we're learning? Or just not the way to use it? So, I mean, he's not really a distance fighter, is he? He's always been more of a close combat kind of fighter. It's cool, though. I mean, it, it is very shield-like, isn't it? So it would make sense if it was something more protective. I liked seeing him try to figure it out, though. Yeah, like, the way that Ichigo is, like, problem-solving on the spot. Especially since, like, I was saying, like, he has experience fighting so it's not like he doesn't um he can't like figure out how a weapon works in the moment because he's used other weapons before i'm gonna distract him by like <laughs> notifications i lost my thought process part way, part way through that Ooh, nice. Oh, so he can like use some a uh, type of projectile from his full bringer instead of like throwing the whole thing itself. So he's like maintaining contact with like the combat pass, but that doesn't mean the energy can't move distances. Look at you go. No? Time guy? Kiriko? Uh, we gotta wait until it's just a little piggy again. What's happening? She has to sneeze on them? Gross. Why is that the way to bring it back? Ew. I mean, probably. Can the Rukia? Yes, what is going on? Why are we following a young girl? I 
Ah, so he is connected to Book Guy. But she's also just really nice, so attacking her would be mean. And she's a little bit absent-minded. Um... Please do not beat her to death. What? I guess he hasn't seen her, her face yet, has he? There we go. <laughs> more importantly she's really sweet so like you really shouldn't attack her I like how all this weirdness is happening, and he's been, like, sent to kill her, and she's just like, are you okay? <laughs> I am interested in, the like, what these two are trying to accomplish. Yeah, she's she's a little absent minded. Don't mind her. She means well though. Oh, well don't bring up the fact that you attacked one of her friends because you're gonna get that kind of face from her. She's all nice until she finds out you attacked one of her friends. And even then she'll probably be nice, but she's gonna like, you know, she's definitely gonna have her guard up. Oh no, book guy is there too. <gasps> Tsukishima? Yeah, I don't like you, so... See, I agree with him. It's very inhumane of you to drag him into this. He's just a random bystander. I don't know if you should be trying to blackmail a group of people who have proven that they can just like use mystical abilities. 
I'm just saying. She can literally turn you into a pig. So, like, maybe don't blackmail her. Mm-hmm. Why do you need the cell phone? Oh, for more training? This poor guy. <laughs> Ichigo. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> I mean Ichigo is kind of used to like really intense shorter spurts of training though yeah go home to your sisters maybe call Orihime and be like I'm fine just saying maybe go see her given the whole situation she's going through. Is he gonna try and use it? Though, if he knows- I mean, maybe Urahime will do alright in this situation? Perhaps. I mean, she has abilities. They're pretty good. In fact, they're quite overpowered, but she just, like, doesn't utilize them. Wait. Tsukishim. Tsukish <laughs> Tsukishima? Is book guy? You're just gonna leave? You've like made yourself known, intimidated, and now you're just gonna leave? Uh oh. Don't remove your bookmark. What if it's important? How will you remember your page? Oh, is he here for him instead? See, that's what I said. But I'm assuming there's something more sinister. Oh, is it his phone ringer? It's connected to the book? Or the bookmark? It makes sense if it's like a physical object. <laughs> Isn't Ichigo still have a bunch? From when she came over. Can he like sense it? That the full bringer was there? Uh oh. See, this stuff's like, I think they might come and then Ichigo's. I mean. Sato was always really good at sensing um, 
spiritual pressure and stuff. So his is the bookmark. He's got a sword. Not exactly. It's complicated. Yet, it's ominous. Oh no. I mean, he was gonna try and kill Otohime, so I don't know how sad I am. Yeah, of course she would try to protect him. Also true. But I'm also worried because, like, Ishida failed to fight him. And, you know, Orihime, bless her, is not, uh, not a huge fighter. Um, she's kind of more, um, I don't know, softer. I gotta like turn off my notifications or something. I'll do it in a second. <laughs> Cause I got distracted a couple times. <laughs> I usually don't have this that many while I'm at like recording. But yeah, like if Ishida wasn't able to be a match for this, um, Tsukishima is his name. Um, I don't think Orihime will do much better. And I'm worried about like Ichigo going. So that's probably okay. But Ichigo like just learned his Fullbringer and they're making a big thing about how he needs to like be patient and let his body heal and stuff like that. That uh, I worry about him trying to get involved in the fight. Especially if he's, like, letting it be known that he now has a full bringer. And, like, what it is. <laughs> it's a good point, said though. How does it manage financially? You tried. Oh no. But he didn't do anything? Oh no. <laughs> so I'm glad that we are in fact getting some context for Orihime specifically. Like I definitely thought that this episode we were going to get her pulled into the story now that we have like Ichigo is with Fullbringer and you're figuring out his and then we had Sado connected too so Orihime was kind of like the only piece that was like directly involved I think with the whole Fullbringer ability. Obviously we're gonna probably get to some other characters as well but I think that she's kind of the main one that has a, an ability close to what Fullbringer is. I think it probably is more connected but her seems to be I don't know a little bit more complex like because Orihime's has like the actual like spirit entities with the like little winged creatures that are part of her ability so it seems a little bit more complex. Fullbringer seems to be a little bit looser than the magic systems that we've seen before like things like Zenpakuto's and like Kido and even just like Hollows seem to have like a specific set of abilities and Fullbringer seems to be a little bit more open to like being like more creative in like what exactly those abilities end up manifesting as but they're still like unique to who the specific person is so I feel like Orihime is probably part of that especially since we're trying to like 
tie in everyone's abilities. Like we already knew that Orihime and Seto's abilities were connected. So I'm assuming that that's the connection, but I don't think she had the same effect when she was like in Hueco Mundo. Like Seto was there and he was like, oh, my powers feel like they fit here better than in the living world. Whereas like Orihime didn't have that reaction, I don't think. So there still might be something a little bit unique about hers, but either way, it's still like a really cool power that she has. And I wish that she kind of utilized it a little bit more, had opportunity to do that. It looks like she's gotten herself mixed up in all of this. I also like that we got to see Ichigo's Fullbringer and I like that it's connected to his Zanpakuto, which makes sense because if he's pulling on all of these memories of him specifically being a Soul Reaper, then it makes sense that he would have a connection to that. Also, the fact that like that's his experience fighting with a, with a weapon. So bringing that into like how he's interacting with his current fighting style that he's trying to learn, I, I think it's really nice to have that direct connection, you know, with like the red and the black, which is how his his spiritual pressure manifests itself and then having the guard be how the fullbringer is shaped. So I really like that we have those two connections there. I also really liked seeing him going through the process of like trying to figure out what exactly the limitations and advantages of fighting with this new weapon were. And like I was saying, like he has a background now in fighting with weapons. So it's not like when he was learning his Zanpakuto, like learning how to be a soul reaper and he was like basically learning how to use weapons from scratch. Whereas like now he has some background. So he's like, okay, what can I do with this? Like what parts of it are similar to like my Zanpakuto or like other people's that he's seen. He's seen lots of other people using different kinds of abilities. So seeing him kind of troubleshoot on the fly to figure out exactly what his Fullbringer can do was actually like a really good way of showing how much he's grown. Like he doesn't need someone to directly tell him how to how to do this. Like he needed help getting to the point where he could actually like be using it and having it like appear in a physical form. But after that, he's like, okay, how do I use it? Let me just try a few things that I know like off the top of my head. So I like that we're still Still, like seeing that progression even though Ichigo is kind of starting over but like he isn't entirely like his experience isn't gone it's not like he like had his memory wiped of everything that went down when he was a soul reaper so I like that we're still bringing that information in and letting him kind of use that knowledge base that he has so that he can like go a little bit faster through the process because you know he, again he's already has fighting training so it's not like he needs to like go through the basics again for it so i really like that we're getting to see that as well but it looks like we are going to get into ichigo maybe trying to use his full bringer in an actual fight confrontation now that we have tsukishima book guy i think that's his name we learned showing up to see orihime i feel like he's really just doing it to like let her know that he's there and like tell her that he was involved with ishida there seems to be some like i don't know manipulation happening mind games going on with him of like him being a little bit strategic about like showing up so that ichigo can see him and like leading him to where his sister was and like the hollow attack and all that so like there seems to be a lot of kind of him feeling out what ichigo and his friends are capable of and like letting them kind of know that he's around as opposed to like actually being intimidating with the exception of Ishida who he just straight up attacked but I'm assuming we'll get back to that at some point. I'm a little bit worried about Ichigo trying to fight with the Fullbringer because he doesn't fully know how to use it and they were talking about how he needs to let his body heal so a little bit little bit nervous going into this but let's just get into episode 350. In three, two, one, go. I turned off my notifications on my computer this time. <laughs> I am intrigued to know, like, one, if Ichigo will, like, actually be able to use his full bringer, if he'll need to, and, like, I don't know, Ichigo's always done well under pressure. Like, he's always kind of adapted really well to situations that pressure him. So, like, he might figure something out about it. It might evolve a little bit. Like, he did really well during the training because he was, like, legitimately in a situation where he needed to figure it out. Maybe the other full bringers will come help out it looks like from the opener that at some point possibly they all fight together but not everything that happens in the opener happens in the actual show so
Yep. Okay, the yet, it's like, I don't, I don't plan on doing anything to you yet. Also makes me really nervous. Because it implies that he will do something to Orihime eventually, or he'll try to do something. He also says that he's heard of her. Like, I assume if she would have any kind of interest in, like, Ichigo and Ishida and all of them that she would know he would know something about who they are prior to showing up to like pick fights with them she's busy it's a good point Look at Sato, thinking ahead. Yeah, I'm like, wouldn't they know that it's, like, where she lives? Yeah. Because Ichigo... Probably knows where she lives. I'm assuming she lives in the same place she did. You know, back during arc one. Okay, but as someone who also loves books, I'm like, probably gonna, like, I, I kind of have a soft spot just because I'm like, I, I too am an avid book appreciator. <laughs> Did she get it wrong? It was a very dramatic way to turn away. <gasps> I was not ready. I did not have support for that. I think I might actually cry. <laughs> Did it not like physically cut her? Still like the shock of it. Knowing that, like, it could. Did she, like, immediately turn back time or something? To heal herself? Like, instinctually? Girl, you should definitely tell them. We've been through this. Y'all need to communicate better. They know you're lying. You might as well tell the truth.
girl. He literally could have killed you if he, if that was his intention. <gasps> Wait, is he messing with her head some way? Like the book thing? Does it have something to do with the book ability, like telling stories? And he's like changing her story? Is that his part of his ability? Is that why, like, there's this contrast between, like, external Inoue? Uh, what do I call it? Inoue, I never call it that. <laughs> um, Orihime, and, like, internal? Oh my gosh, that's his thing, isn't he? He rewrites the story. That's fascinating to think of in connection to Ishida, though. Who we haven't really spent a lot of time with. After what happened. It might explain why there's some inconsistencies with, like, the way that he's acting. I mean, I get that. Yeah. I am glad that Ichigo didn't have to jump in to fight. Because I don't know if that would have gone super well. But you shouldn't be lying to him. The lies are just gonna build up. And it's gonna put all of these barriers between everybody. They should just talk to each other. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. She asleep? Oh, we've lost him. phone call who is it someone coming to visit oh Ichigo get down from the sweater the cardigan <laughs> Mm-hmm. You sobered up fast. So they do have a connection. I thought they probably did. Since they have, like, a similar ability. They're probably after the same thing or similar thing. I'm not entirely shocked, <laughs> to be honest. Is 
Isn't that his boss? Ooh. <laughs> Stood too close. <laughs> oh. Didn't he, like, already say he wanted to quit or, like, be fired? I think she's, like, legitimately worried about him, though. true i bet he feels kind of isolated though like not only from his friends but like his dad isn't around like ishan's off doing whatever he's doing and Udahata, i don't know what he's doing so he doesn't really have adults in his life that like understand the situation that he's in Ooh, that's an interesting twist, though. So he was the leader. Okay, so he figured it all out. So smart, we kind of knew that, though. Uh oh. Why, though? For the carnage? I mean, that's true. It could have also been his plan the entire time. Okay, so we're acknowledging that he has one of them. Is it because of the previous substitute Soul Reaper? Yeah, the whole hollow thing with his sister. He must feel really guilty though, but like not really knowing what he was agreeing to, like not even fully agreeing to it and like people he cares about are already being targeted in like a conflict he like didn't even know anything about until recently. Hey! 
You're actually around. I knew that Udahada and him had some going on. They're working on something. I'm assuming it involves full bringers and stuff. Because he can sense it. That Ichi goes around. I'm assuming they both can. Trying to listen in. I don't think he's your enemy. I think it's just complicated. It's a bit of a jarring image. With a silhouette. Shadow. Did he call her to try and figure out if she'll tell him what happened? Now that he's not with Ichigo? It makes me wonder what happened in the interval, though. Because it seems like he, like, rewrote some of her memory. In which case, did something happen in the interval that we don't know about? And if he can do something like that, then it makes sense that he would be, like, in charge of a group of people, like the other Fullbringers. And that they would trust him. And, like, it would seem so out of character for him to turn around and, like, betray him. Uh, betray them, because, like, if he can rewrite that and make people think that they're friends with him, then... You know, it's easy to control a group of people if that's part of your ability. Was that the wrong name again? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, why do you have him? Question. Is he important somehow? Done what? I feel like he did a similar thing with Ishida too. Which also worries me. No. <laughs> I'm very defensive of Seto. Uh oh. That's also ominous. We keep ending with a shot of him. 
saying like really ominous things and I don't love it. <laughs> At least we finally have a definite villain, adversary, character. I assumed it would have something to do with him. I just wasn't really sure what the dynamic was going to be in terms of like these two groups, like I was saying before, like um, Ginjo's group and then uh, Tsukishima, those two. I saw, th I like knew they're probably separate things, but it was like I didn't know how they connected. I guess they're not really separate things necessarily because they were one group and then have since separated, so there is a clearer connection. I'm very intrigued by this um, ability to, I don't know, manipulate people's memory. I'll talk about it in a little bit, though. <laughs> oh no, what is this going to turn into? <laughs> Good, Ishin. Loyalty. Oh, it's just cats. <laughs> I love that. I feel like that episode was very oriented towards like figuring out who the the Kish the Kishima. I'm like so hesitant to say his name anyway. Figuring out Book Guy's connection and like who he is and I'm going into some of like what his abilities might be. I'm assuming because it's connected to the bookmark specifically but I guess the book in some capacity. I feel like the book has to be important but I can't read enough like kanji to be able to figure out what it is. Maybe I could look it up. Maybe I could do that. I feel like we were focusing kind of on him and going into his abilities with this kind of bookmark connection and the way that it seemed like he had these references where he was like oh that's not a good line like he said to Orihime like that would never make it into the book and stuff like that makes me think that he has some kind of like rewrite ability where he's able to like change the story of of someone whether that's like messing with their memories or their perceptions I'm not sure if it's both or one of them but it does seem like he did something to Orihime to make her think that for a brief moment that they were friends or that she was friendly with him I think to some extent she was like intentionally lying because Ichigo was there and she doesn't want to like pull him into this but at the same time I think she's also like having her like memory of him specifically messed with so I feel like that has something to do with what his ability is and that would make sense of him you know having this group of people before with the other people who could use Fullbringer and being able to manipulate them to get what he wants and having them feel like they could trust him like Ginjo pointed out that you know, if he had this ability to kind of shift people's perception of him, you know, rewrite their relationship, then it would make sense that he could have a group of people trust him and look up to him and then, you know, have him suddenly betray them and everyone be shocked by it. I definitely feel like that might be something of him. I'm not sure exactly his entire motive, like saying he wants to get the abilities of this full burner, maybe. He wants to increase his ability. Um, I know that his goal probably with Ichigo is to prevent Ginjo and his, his group from interacting with him and getting what they want. It, probably because he has some other plan for their abilities to like make himself stronger. I'm not really sure how that'll work. Like I know that they said that they could transfer their abilities to a substitute soul reaper but i don't know if that translates into like being able to transfer their ability to other people who can use full burger unless like tsukishima was a soul reaper in some capacity and then maybe he could have the ability i'm assuming they could just give the ability to like another person who had full burger they would have just like given it to like one of the members like they would have just like given it to like ginjo and moved on with their life or something so i feel like there's some complexity to what exactly his plan is that i don't know about but i'm sure we'll we'll figure out something i like that we got a 
little hint, like reminder that Ishin and Urahara are like still doing something in the background. I mean, I didn't forget that, but I like that we're kind of pulling that part of the story back in now that we've established Ichigo's new abilities and him training with that. And, you know, it, it seems like maybe he's going to have to deal with getting attacked, possibly. It seems like that might be the plan to just go straight after Ichigo because Ginjo won't expect it. But I like that we're kind of bringing a bunch of these pieces that got set up earlier on. We kind of put on pause while Ichigo was kind of dealing with his own stuff. And now we're kind of building back up some of those pieces. So I'm really excited about where this season is going. There's so much like mystery and ambiguity about it that I really enjoy. Lots of like character-based moments. I really like that we're getting to see like Orihime and like Sato interacting with each other and some more of like Ishin and Urahara interacting with each other. Like characters that didn't really get a chance to just interact independent of like there being other characters around so i like that we're getting to see some of those develop as well you can click this playlist to go and see my previous reactions or you can subscribe so you don't miss the next time i post a bleach video and i will see you in the next video bye